Hey, how's it going everyone? Uh, I just got into coding recently and I figured since coding is pretty difficult in itself, even though it's just logic based, that uh, I should make some coding videos for anyone who wants to follow along and learn some new things. Also to help solidify myself with actually learning the code. So right here I'm on this website called Code Wars. It's really good. It gives you daily katas. So what that is is just a different problem. You could do many a day or just one or two. I tend to do one to two. Uh, here's an example of a kata right here. It says the goal of this exercise is to convert a string to a new string where each character in the new string is in opening parentheses. If that character appears only once in the original string or a backwards parentheses if that character appears more than once in the original string. Ignore capitalization when determining if a character is a duplicate. So over here I commented out the code that I used to solve this. We're just going to kind of break it down. Now my code is honestly not that great, but I'm also new to it. Uh, and I think how I write it might actually help conceptualize better for people who are newer anyway. Um, but let's go ahead and get into this. So really when it comes to coding, it's all about how you think, right? So you need to think through the problem. So like in the question itself, you know, it already says in the, in the new string. So we know we're going to need another string. We know we're going to need to know if a character appeared more than once, so we're going to need to count it. Uh, I think the easiest way that we all know how to count things is using for loops. So what we could do is take each character and make it as a value, as like an actual part of an object. So we'll have an object and listed under it each one of these letters. And then if the letter already exists, we can just leave it as a value of one. And if it, you know, doubles or triples, like how E, there's three E's here, then the value of E in the object will be three. Um, now my terminology is not great. I believe it's called a key. So like there's an object and then that has a key, which then has a value. So it looks like this for anyone who's even newer than me. I believe that's how it goes, um, but I do know how to use it regardless. So we're going to need an object that can hold all these. So we're going to put, you know, I'm just going to use object to keep it simple. So I'm saying let the variable object, you don't have to write object. This could be anything. I'm just leaving it as object for now. Uh, but let object equals, and then this is the actual empty object itself. So that's where we're going to put all the different letters as keys. Now, we do know we need to ignore lower any upper cases, um, and that we need to make an array to actually be able to split up all these different letters. So we're going to go ahead and do let letter equal to word, which is just this up here. So whatever they type in here will populate down here. Dot to lowercase. So all this function is going to do is turn anything that's in word to lowercase. Then we're going to go ahead and split that. Uh, you can only split strings. So like a number, a sequence of numbers wouldn't work. Uh, just so you know that. Now we're going to go ahead and put these quotations in here. Single or double doesn't matter. It could be either or. Now we're going to go under here and we're going to enter into a for loop. I'll make videos on that later. Right now I'm just working on these katas here. So we're going to go for let i equal zero. And so what this is doing, a for loop, I'll get into them later. Uh, basically, just so you know, i, it doesn't matter what you put here. i just stands for integer in this case, and it's just something that everyone puts. Just kind of keeps it simple. So we're going to start out with i equaling 0. And while i is less than letter.length, We're going to go ahead and do i plus plus. So i starting at 0, as long as i is less 
than letter.length, it's going to loop through our for loop. And the dot length feature just means the length of letter, which is now a split string of whatever word we put in. So if we put in, you know, like raccoon, you'd have to split up every single letter and add them up, and that's the length. All right. <clears throat> so once we come under here, what we do want to do is go through each individual letter and decide how it's going to be processed in the object. So we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to use x as my variable. So let x equal letter i. So this is going to loop through the letter array and what that's going to do is x is basically just going to resemble, you know, whatever position in the array we are. So we're going to start at 0, so you know, let's say the word was bob, then letter 0 is going to be b because it's the first spot in the array which is notated as 0 index 0. So we definitely needed a for loop. Now we need a set of conditions, right? So we are going to put if object x equals to undefined I'm going to do object x equals to 1. Okay, so what this little snippet of code is saying is right here it's going to say x equals letter i, so if it's the first letter in Bob it's obviously b, so if object b is undefined, which it is because there's nothing in our object right now, so anything that's not in here will come back as undefined. So if it is undefined, we're going to go ahead and make object B exist with a value of 1. Now after that, we're going to do else. So you know, in Bob there's two Bs. So let's say that it's not undefined because now it has a value of 1. We're going to do object X plus equals 1. And what this essentially is doing is just adding 1 to the value. So if it's Bob, since there's two Bs, it'll be, uh, you know, the key B equals the value of 2. Cool. So now we have something that counted it all. So that's really easy. Uh, I think most of you have probably already dealt with that. So now that we have that done, what we got to do is, is return it as these different parentheses. So we're going to go ahead and drop down out of the for loop. And we're going to return letter dot map. Function letter. So what the map does is it will pretty much, again, I'm pretty new, but basically what, as far as I'm aware, map does is it goes through the array that you gave it, and then you can use a function to edit it. So like if there was a two in this array, and you did dot map function, and then you did x times two, you know, function x, and then in here you put x times two, then if there was a two, it would be four, and so on and so forth. So what we're going to do now that we have that down is we're going to return object x equals to 1. And I believe they said if it appears once, it will be this. So 
So this right here is just saying that once it goes through the array letter by letter, each letter will be put under here. So if object x is equal to 1, then it'll return this, otherwise that. This is just shorthand for an, for an if statement, you know, if this, then that, else this. Um, so that's what this is. If it confuses you at all, it's just shorthand for really simple statements. Like even this probably could have been like this, but I'm not that great at using these, so I don't use them too much. I think it's called trepolation or something like that. All right. And then that's pretty much it. All we have left is just to join it because uh, it will want it to look like this, right? So at the end of the function, so you see how there's the parentheses that's matching this one. So for this whole thing inside here, we're just going to do dot join and throw that in. And I believe that's it. Just double check. Right, so it looks good. Um, I think I actually hit everything. I'm surprised I didn't choke up much more anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and try it out. Okay, so we got an, uh, an error here. Let's see. It says x is not defined. So this is actually good. I would normally like to go through errors. Um, I just don't see where I'm wrong personally, but it's saying that x is not defined. And I know I have x right here defined. Hmm. And this is where you just want to go through and read your code over. I don't even see how it's different than what I have down here. Let's see if this one. Huh, what did I do differently? Hmm. I'm going to pull this up just so we can have both of them on the screen because clearly this one is the correct one, which was my original one that I wrote. I must have actually messed something up just because I was talking here, but we have function duplicate and code word. Let object equal an empty object. Let letter equal word to lowercase with a split. For let i equal zero, i plus a letter length, i plus plus, and let x equal equal letter i if object x let me just get rid of that i swear if that was it is equal to undefined object x equals one else object x plus equals one turn letter map the function letter return object ah so right there that's where i made my mistake So I was using object x, right, like this, but I'm outside of the for loop, so I made a little mistake right there, so that's why it's good to always read through and double check your code. So now that I exited the for loop, I can't use that x anymore, and I didn't want to anyway. I wanted to actually go through the array of the original split string of whatever word they had put in. 
So when you guys get down to this return, it's return letter dot map function letter return object letter, meaning whatever the new letter is. I mean, I guess if I put X there and X there, it wouldn't have made a difference. But I had used letter, so I had to stick with it. So it's the little things in code that matter, right? So now we're just going to go ahead and take this and test it out. Beautiful. So there we go. I mean, I already submitted it. I'm going to do it again anyway for you guys. So you can kind of see how it works. So see, again, it goes through. And I'm not going to submit it because I already did this one and I don't want points by accident. So yeah, so anyway, that's how you actually solve this duplicate encoder problem. Uh, there are probably simpler ways or ones that are more shortcut than this. It's, it's a pretty long code. I'm sure it could be shorter, but I didn't know how. And that's the whole point of coding though, is you have to go out and do it. So like at least with what I did know how to do, I was able to solve this problem. And I'm sure in the future I'll learn better ways, but for now, this was how I figured out how to do it using some pretty basic things. All right, well, thank you guys. I'll probably be posting more coding videos now and then, either from Code Wars or just other fun little things that I picked up or some of the basics. But thank you for your time, and I hope you check back in.